The information contained in this video is intended to assist assembly personnel. It does not relieve installation personnel or the user of the circuit breaker from the obligation to take into account and observe the notes and warnings contained in the operating instructions manual for this breaker with regard to installation, commissioning, operation and maintenance. Failure to observe the warnings given in the operating instructions manual may result in death, severe personal injury and substantial damage to property and the environment. Danger for installation personnel from hazardous voltage, transport gas pressure in the pole columns, SF6 gas, falling and or toppling parts and or moving parts. The control leads must not be connected to the terminal block of the control unit until the circuit breaker has been erected complete with the pole columns. Assembly begins when the breaker is unloaded on site. The transport unit, consisting of the breaker base and operating mechanism, and the three pole columns in a package, is hanging from four strops at least four meters in length. The connecting plates between the pole columns are loosened before the pole column package is separated from the rest of the transport unit. The three pole columns in their package are set down on firm ground but are not yet unhooked from the suspension gear. The package with the three pole columns is taken apart and the three columns laid out next to one another. The breaker base is now hoisted and set down on the supporting pillars of the foundation. Eight nuts and bolts are needed to bolt it together. By the way, the breaker frame can also be mounted on rollers. Use the spirit level to see if we've got things straight. To make it easier to connect the gas lines later, we now loosen the three filler plugs on the gas tubes in the breaker base. Before placing the pole columns on the base, we'll check the SF6 priming filling of the pole columns to make sure they're still gas tight. Undo the locking nut and then press the non-return valve in the flange very briefly. The hissing noise confirms it. There's transport pressure in the poles. They're tight. Now close the flange again. All three pole columns are checked in the same way. The hot galvanized bolts used for installation are first lubricated with molly coat. All the bolts marked with red paint are now replaced by the bolts in the accessories pack. These are tightened at the tightening torque specified in the operating instructions manual. Assembly begins with pole column B, which can also be recognized by the double lever on the corner gear. To avoid damaging the corner gear, place a piece of wood beneath it. Pole column B is now inserted into the center opening in the breaker base and the double lever is connected to the operating mechanism by the coupling bolts. The flange on the pole column is bolted to the breaker base and the bolts tightened by hand. Release the two lifting eye bolts at the top of the pole column. You're going to need them for the next one. Here too, the red transport bolts have to be replaced. The coupling rods are inserted from both sides of the breaker base and connected to pole B. This involves removing the alignment bolt and then using the same bolt again to fix the two coupling rods in open position. Now pole column A takes its place on the breaker base 
and is aligned with the coupling rod. Insert two washers, put in the alignment bolt and tighten it by hand to fasten column A to the breaker base. Pole column C is installed in the same way. Get them lined up. Don't forget the washers. And bolt them together. We can now screw the three pole columns to the breaker base at the prescribed tightening torque. All the screws, nuts and washers used to assemble the breaker have to be painted and any damage to the paintwork on the breaker itself must be touched up. Once you've done all this, it's time to replace all the alignment bolts on all the pole columns with the coupling bolts from the accessories pack. Each of the coupling bolts is then secured with an M 6x12 screw and a washer. And now let's connect the SF6 pipes. Remove the sealing caps from the gas pipe and the flange on the pole column. Replace the O-ring on the gas pipe with a new O-ring from the accessories pack, first greasing it with Vaseline. Make sure that all sealing surfaces and all parts used for assembly are spotlessly clean. First, line up the gas pipe parallel to and flush with the connecting flange. Then screw the union nuts from the gas pipe onto the flange, but not far enough to let any gas escape. Do the same thing with the other two pole columns. Once you've done this, tighten all the union nuts by hand, one after the other in quick succession. You'll hear a hissing noise which stops when the last union nut is closed. Tighten all the union nuts at a tightening torque of 40 newton meters. Put the sealing caps from the gas pipes and connecting flanges and the three alignment bolts in a safe place and keep them for future use. Once the high voltage conductors have been connected, the circuit breaker is filled with SF6 gas. A complete filling device with safety valve can be supplied with the breaker to enable you to fill it. Only specially qualified personnel are allowed to fill the breaker. The hose from the filling device is connected to the maintenance flange on the circuit breaker. Gas can now be poured in from the gas cylinder. The regulating valve on the cylinder fitting limits the gas flow to prevent the fittings from icing up. The filling process is continuously checked by keeping an eye on the precision pressure gauge. The rating plate shows you the nominal filling pressure for the gas compartment of the breaker. When filling up, the SF6 filling curve in the operating instructions manual must be observed. Once the nominal filling pressure has been reached, the filling device is removed and the filling flange closed tightly. Again, please make sure everything is perfectly clean. And now all the joints between the gas pipe system and the pole columns must be checked for leaks. You can use a leak detector to do this. 